Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gent Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today I have for you guys 10 different fragrances that have jaw-dropping, fantastic smelling dry downs. And it's a good mix of niche and designer fragrances both. Some of these fragrances are awesome all the way through. Opening smells great, mid smells great, dry down smells great. Then some of them, yeah, they have an opening that's a little bit, what would you say? Rough. But if you can make it to the dry down, you're gonna be in for a treat. Each one of these is linked below. Feel free to check them out down there in the description. And if you would like some codes, pause the video now. Or alternatively, look in the description, they're down there too. Okay, these are in no particular order. Let's just jump into it. First one is actually the first fragrance that came to my mind when I was making this list. It is Mancera's Red Tobacco. So Red Tobacco, uh, when this came out, I gotta admit the first probably five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten <laughs> times that I wore it, I wasn't really a fan at all of the opening. And a lot of you guys have echoed that as well over the years. Red Tobacco's opening is pungent. It's strong, it's got a lot going on. Reaching for a tester strip down here. Looked like I was just randomly fondling something underneath this desk. It's got some fruity sweetness in there, a whole lot of spice. It has a tinge of that Mancera synthetic feel to it. And then it's got tobacco, it has woods. It just, it has a lot going on, like I said. And that opening, if you're unprepared for it, can be rough, it can be very off-putting, it can be divisive. Now, as time has gone on, I've grown to really appreciate the opening and it doesn't bother me a bit now, but I know for a lot of you out there, that's not the case. And you just think, man, opening, unwearable. But as this dries down, it smooths out so much. And for the price point, I think Red Tobacco is actually a great buy, and that goes for a lot of Banceros. After that, Ferragamo Womo Signature. Now, Ferragamo has pretty much moved away from this line, as best as I can tell. They're concentrating more now on that Ferragamo leather line of fragrances that look like this, which I actually like the presentation. I think it looks pretty sweet. Not that I mind this presentation either. I think this one, it looks pretty sweet. Built-in atomizer that works kind of okay. Now this one has an opening that I actually think smells pretty nice. Nothing wrong with this one. It's not anywhere near as divisive as that one in the opening and as it dries down, it smells fantastic. Another one with very good performance. Great projection, great longevity, has a really wonderful roast coffee note in there with a good amount of Tonka sweetness working alongside that coffee. In the original Ferragamo Womo, it was a tiramisu note. And this one is pretty similar to how that comes across, just with a little more oomph and more of that roasted nature to it. Let's go back to a niche fragrance with this one, Chambre Noir from Olfactive Studio. This one is decently affordable from discounters. I think it's usually around $115 or so US as of this video for a full presentation, 100 ml size bottle. And actually that's a great price when you consider that designer fragrances nowadays at full retail are more expensive than that most of the time. And uh, this one has been compared off and on to the smell of Bentley for Men Intense but it is way, way smoother than Bentley from an Intense, much easier to wear. It's not as aggressive, not as overwhelming, but it does still have that, that darkness to it, that woodiness. And this is yet another one that's more for fall and winter, which really most of these I'm gonna to talk to you about here today are uh, warmer, deeper fragrances that are going to be better for cooler weather. But even though this is a fall and winter time fragrance, it's not overwhelmingly strong in the opening or anything. Both of these are stronger than Chambre Noir. This one just has a, a great smoothness going along with those more mysterious, darker notes and smells absolutely amazing from start to finish for me, but especially in that dry down. It even has a nice classiness once you do reach the base of the scent. Let's do a designer scent up next, Polo Red Parfum from Ralph Lauren. Now, truth be told, this is not my favorite Polo Red fragrance. That would be probably Polo Red Intense and also Polo Red Extreme. Polo Red Intense, very difficult to find nowadays. And Extreme, getting that way as well. Don't know where I want to sit it. Keep it there. Polo Red has been known for its cranberry note. That's one of the main things that people will think of when they think Polo Red. Especially Polo Red Intense, like I said. Fantastic opening in that one, man. I love it. But this one, unfortunately, does not have cranberry as one of the official notes. Instead, this one has uh, blood orange in the opening. 
But to be fair, that's how Polo Red Extreme was in the opening as well. Now, even though this does not have that cranberry in the forefront, it does still have that Polo Red DNA. If you're familiar with how those fragrances smell, this has a bit of that as well, which you would expect, of course. And this one has a nice little touch, a little touch of iris as it dries down, uh, along with musk in there, a clean musk and a bit of woodiness as well. And that one, Polo Red Parfum, you can pretty much use year round, daytime or nighttime. It's a fragrance that's very easy to pull off, very versatile. Up next, a very unassuming bottle. Uh, actually, this whole line has bottles that to me, almost make it where I feel people don't take it as seriously as they should, the line of fragrances. It's from Chopard, and it is Black Incense Malaki. Now, I know you look at this Chopard bottle and you think, well, what's wrong with it? Well, it just looks very, to me anyway, again, just my opinion, kind of nondescript. Cylindrical bottle, and then uh, basically just a sticker slapped on the front. A lot of them look like that, just a very plain sticker, which, frankly looks pretty cheap when you pop that on the front of these bottles. But with these Chopard fragrances, basically if you know, you know. The quality is crazy on these, and this one is killer. Leather, incense, resins, oud, it's got it all. But the quality there is extremely nice, so it has a smoothness to it. A little bit of a, a sparkle, kind of a a bubbly effervescent nature to it, even though it's made with all these heavier notes. It has been compared a little bit to Gucci Guilty Absolute, which is a fragrance, of course, that a lot of people did not care for, if we're talking just your, your average person, but this one is kind of a step up from that. Wonderful fragrance from opening to dry down, but especially once you hit that dry down and you have a little more sweetness that comes out, it becomes so classy and so unique smelling against other things out there that people are wearing during fall and winter. That's a killer. Let's get something easier to wear though overall next, Guerlain Lome Ideal Extreme. Since we're talking uniqueness, I think in a way, the Lome Ideal line, all of them, pretty unique against the uh, other big designers out there. Yes, I'm saying Lome Ideal is more of a designer fragrance, even though I know it's Guerlain, and a lot of people would be like, no, no, Guerlain is niche. But <laughs> I think most of us agree the Lomity All line that's competing against uh, designer fragrances, right? This is being made to go up against Dior, YSL, stuff like that. This one has almond, plum, tobacco, leather, and cinnamon as some of the notes in the fragrance. It is one of the best selling in the entire lineup. And this is another one where I think the opening is very, very appealing, especially that, that bit of that darker fruit that you get from the plum. But Oh, dude, when, when this dries down, you get that leather mixing with that pipe tobacco, that cinnamon and the remnants of the plum. That is just absolutely amazing. The problem with Lome Ideal Extreme in the US has been that it's hard to find or has been hard to find, but here lately, it's been easier to pick up, thankfully both at retail stores and discounters. Back to niche with Zerzhov's Luxor. Part of their Oud Stars line and the opening of this is the part that can drive some people away, especially if they're not used to niche Oud fragrances. And why is that you say? Well, because when you very first give this one a spray, it has a slightly animalic, slightly fecal, if you want to call it that, Oud note that comes right through. You know, it comes from the bottom and works its way straight up to the top and punches you right in the nose. Now it's not extremely overwhelming. There are a lot of fragrances that I've smelled with Oud that is much funkier than this one, but if you're unprepared for it, if you've never smelled it before, if you don't know what you're in for, then when you spray it on and give it a whiff, you're probably not gonna be having a good time. I can tell you with absolute confidence, if I sprayed this on a decade ago for my wife before, <laughs> before she went through the gauntlet of smelling every fragrance known to man, she would have probably thrown up half a gag and called me a moron for buying it. I'm not saying she'd do that now, but I'm saying she would have before. But as this dries down, poof. It is really, really appealing. 
And that's because as it dries, you get tobacco again. You get a lot of spices that are done very well. Sweet, warm, appealing, comforting cinnamon and cardamom. A bit of incense in there as well, giving it a nice smokiness. And that's really there from the opening into the dry down. But those spices help take the edge off of the oud. And the oud settles down as well and becomes more of just kind of a dark, sexy, mysterious woodiness instead of a, my horse just took a dump on my foot woodiness. So the dry down here, nice. The opening for some people. Let's go to another one that's kind of like that uh, in the sense that the opening is a little rough for some people, but the dry down more appealing. Terra Essence from Bulgari. So this one's got quite an earthiness off the top, which you would expect. It's called Terra Essence, right? So it should have an earthiness and it does, it does. It's got this vetiver earthy kind of vibe that may remind you a little bit of fragrances like Terre d'Hermes from Hermes or even Gucci Guilty Absolute. So depending on how you like your fragrances, the opening is going to be either pretty rough or something that you think is nice, classy, gentlemanly. But it is a fragrance that seems to be kind of 50-50 split as far as the opening goes. But as it dries down, it once again, like a bunch of these here, smooths out and you get a little bit of iris that comes through and you get the faintest little touch of sweetness as it dries and frankly you need that for a designer fragrance to be more appealing you need that because the opening here like i said it can be a bit much it can be a bit divisive and a lot of people will spray that on and just go nope make a snap decision but if you let that dry it gets so much better then we have l'envoi de Cartier. so this one smells nice off the top it's not as off-putting as a lot of these but the dry down is to die for it is great it's an iris fragrance well one of the main notes is iris in there anyway and it has this this honey a nice semi-dark honey, not really powdery, with good sweetness, mixing with guyac wood, musk, patchouli, another fragrance that you could easily wear in a more formal situation on an evening out. The guyac gives it a, a touch of like smokiness through there. The patchouli is not overly earthy, but again, it gives you just a little, little edge to the scent. I absolutely adore the stuff. It's one that, I overlooked myself. I bought it when it was brand new, uh, sprayed it once, didn't really think too much of it for whatever reason, put it up, and then actually like two years later or something, went and sprayed it on again and found myself just thinking, why have I not worn this stuff? It's amazing, and especially the dry down is. All right, last one, Tobacco Oud, Tom Ford. This one is a little bit like Red Tobacco or Luxor in the fact that the opening here can be a bit much for some people. Yes, another fragrance with the oud in it, where the opening can be a little iffy. That happens from time to time with fragrances that prominently feature oud. The opening can just really hit you. Very strong, very polarizing, but like red tobacco, like Luxor, as it dries down, sweetness comes in, takes some of the edge off, and it settles in to a fragrance that's both very boozy, sweet, with a really wonderful pipe tobacco, and the woodiness mellows out, and it becomes just 10 out of 10 for me. For me personally, Tobacco Oud is one of my favorite Tom Fords ever. Oh, oof, it's good. But again, it is that opening. That opening can be very iffy. I've said this before on the channel, but my wife hated, hated Tobacco Oud when I first got it. After many wearings, she came around to liking it. I don't know if that's Stockholm Syndrome or what, but yeah. So there we go, 10 different fragrances, all about that base. These are about the dry down, some of them the opening and mid as well, but all of these, once they've settled on your skin, lights out. I wanna thank you guys for hanging with me here today. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances that you own or have smelled where the opening maybe didn't do it for you, but once it dried down, it was amazing. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.